When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is, we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to Metro PCS. Stop by Metro PCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require reporting of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Nonprofit View, a forum where nonprofit stakeholders can share lessons learned and discuss the latest developments in the industry. My name is Valerie Leonard, your host. I'm a consultant to nonprofits, and I specialize in community and organizational development. I work with nonprofit organizations to help them make a stronger impact to their clients and their communities. And you can find Nonprofit U on Facebook and on Twitter. I encourage you to follow us and to comment early and often using the hashtags Nonprofit U or the toolkit, the TIFF toolkit. You can also leave comments on blogtalkradio.com forward slash nonprofit underscore you. The chat room is open, and you can post comments and questions. In order to use the chat room, you must open a listener-only account. You can find a link to open the account on the page of this episode in the comment section. And you can also email me questions at consulting at ValerieFLeonard.com. We'll be taking questions by phone from our chat room I'm sorry, and from our chat room at about the 20-minute mark or so. And the call-in number is 347-884-8121. Again, that number is 884-8121. When we last spoke with Catalina Gaite and Cecile Carol de Mello, we learned that they have managed to work with local residents and elected officials to bring democracy to the TIF program. They also developed affordable housing, and looked at ways to make microfinancing available to small businesses from the neighborhood. And that in Chicago is no small feat, I have to tell you. They are now ready to launch a TIF toolkit to share the lessons they've learned along the way with the community practitioners around the city. Again, we encourage you to call in with questions at about the 20-minute mark, and you can start posting in the chat room and emailing questions right now. Again, my email address is consulting at ValerieFlannert.com. And if you want to participate in a live chat, you must open an account, and the link is found on the bottom of this episode in the comment section. The call-in number is 347-884-8121. And we're looking for community development professionals, nonprofit professionals, as well as community activists who live or work in TIF districts and we're really looking for you to call and share some of your war stories. So uh, we'll start with our first guest, Catalino, and Catalina, we call her Cato for short. And Cato, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, give us a status report of your TIF advocacy as it relates to housing and Sure. Good, good afternoon. Um, like Valerie said, I'm Caro. Um, I'm a popular educator who um, has dedicated most of my life, adult life, uh, to fighting for economic justice, self-determination, and making sure that those that are directly impacted are the ones leading the fight. Um, as co-director of Blocks Together for the last eight years, we have been working alongside the Blocks Together Economic Justice Committee, formerly the Housing Committee, uh, to ensure that our community is not forgotten and that public dollars are reinvested. Um, and we came to the conclusion that um, the fight just focusing on affordable housing was not really translating into affordability, therefore not um, benefiting our community, right? So we realized that affordable, affordable housing fight was not um, actually benefiting our community because it did not translate into affordability. So then we mm -hmm. really began to look at it and, and understand that the fight was for economic justice and for us to be able to benefit from the development occurring in our communities, right? How is it that we can sustain and grow economically? How is it that we can 
bring more stability, economic stability into our community. So we saw our fight larger than just fighting for affordable housing, but changing um, what that meant and, and how that fought, uh, how that fought, that fight um, took place. Mm-hmm. And what we saw um, was that through our um, our, our housing, this, the little thing called TIF was impacting a lot of um, the resources coming into our community, and therefore that's how we launched our TIF campaign eight years ago. Okay, and just to step back a little bit, um, can you define what a TIF is? You know, it's kind of complicated. I don't want to assume that everybody knows what a TIF is. Well, um, the TIFs are mostly used for uh, economic development or financing tools. So what it is is um, it's supposed to, and I say supposed to be used in blighted communities, and meaning by mm-hmm. that is in areas where there would be no development but for the TIF. Okay. Right. And we've seen, uh, so this is the money that comes out of uh, homeowners' property taxes and mm-hmm. um the new increment, which is the, the new the new the new money coming in because of the TIF, is uh, frozen okay. and set aside, um, diverting money from public public schools, uh, the police, fire stations, you know, most of your taxing bodies. Money is diverted from and it is, then it's utilized to um, have economic development in that community. But what we what we've seen and learned. Um, since the inception of the TIF uh, program and under the hands of Mayor Daly, how severely abused it was and mm-hmm. um, it, how more was used to benefit his um, allies, to not use a oh, – uh, so we'll just use it that way, too. You know, he used it. It was used more as an economic incentive for his allies and for political gains rather than for what it was intended, which was economic development in poor communities. Okay, great, great. Thanks so much, Cato. And Cecile, you know, the same question. We want to get a sense for where you are in terms of your TIF advocacy. In fact, your TIF advocacy really was born from your advocacy with schools and school actions and some of the closings and all that good stuff. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and give us an update on your advocacy as it relates to education? Sure. Thanks, Valerie. Um, So I uh, come to this work as a mother myself of students in the Chicago Public School System. Um, So Mm -hmm. I've done parent organizing uh, through different ways, um, from everything to, like, safe passage stuff from um, in Roseland. But most of my work has been in West Humble Park with Blocks Together around um, education reform initiatives. And one of the things that we worked on and blocked together for a few years was this story about unfolding how does capital improvement um, actually Mm -hmm. function in the city. And that intersects with TIF dollars in that a portion of capital improvement dollars um, from year to year come from the TIF. The the amounts vary. But um, one of the things we were struggling with in the community is that we had some schools that were in disrepair and needed some assistance, but then we would see capital dollars and some from a TIF be given to schools for interior renovations when some of our schools in the community had bare bone things that needed to be addressed. And so mm-hmm. for about three, four years, we um, worked on introducing state legislation that would create a more transparent process and more transparency okay. around dollars when it comes to capital improvement. And um, and so this was through Senate Bill 630 in 2011. And so we we were able to mandate that the district um, create a 10-year master facility plan where schools can look up and see what school what repairs do my, my schools need. You can also look up okay. capital dollars and where they're going to be spent as well as um, school action, a uh, different kind of school action process, which included school closures to not be announced after December 4th, or 1st so that parents can have an option to go somewhere else if they're not okay with the potential action and how can it impact their children. Mm, that is awesome stuff, awesome stuff. So thanks so much for that, Cecile. Carol, I see where Blacks Together has published a TIF toolkit, and this was done in partnership with the University of Illinois, the Great Cities Institute, as well as the Participatory Budgeting Project. 
can you give us a brief overview of what's in it? Don't tell everybody everything because we want them to come out to your event and where the listeners might find it. Well, the um, the toolkit consists of, like you said, it was a partnership with Great Cities and PB Chicago, um, and it will consist about basic information of the mechanisms of a TIF, what is a TIF, um, how it's used, um, also resources and information where you can get more information regarding um, the, the TIF portal, uh, how to be able to sign up for uh, the annual report. So it's just a more general information on what is a TIF, how it functions, how it can be used to benefit your community, and then also what is participatory budgeting and how it's mm-hmm. been used here in the United States, and also a little bit of history of where it started in Brazil and how it's been used um, really to strengthen democracy, right? And then also, mm-hmm. uh, on also another part of the toolkit is really focusing on blocks together, uh, organizing values mm-hmm. and methodology, what are some of the tools and resources we use to be able to, we've been able to engage community. Because for us, what, one of our main values is really to ensure um, that those that are directly impacted are leading the fight, correct? So for, for us, it was really mm-hmm. around um, c- creating popular end materials around workshops so that people are engaged, doing TIFF barbecues. So it's really going to be um, um, resources and lessons learned from our organizing mm-hmm. in, in the last eight years. And where, like, if somebody was just starting and didn't know nothing about a TIFF, they could pick mm-hmm. this up. If somebody was trying to start a campaign, they can also pick this up and find uh, resources and different ways um, that we were able to engage community elected officials and different stakeholders, ensuring that everybody had an equal seat at the table with the same information. So you'll be able to find th- those information and also um, – Get ideas, and because one of the things that we stress is that not everybody has to follow the way we did it. These are just mm-hmm. lessons learned and some tools, and also like one of our biggest lessons um, in doing this, right, was ensuring that the community is at the leading it, right, but also ensuring that the community has the tools and the information to advocate and lead those negotiations with the aldermen and the Department of Planning and the different people um, that are gatekeepers. In, in ensuring that we can get what what is ours and what we need for our community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I love your approach because typically, you know, anything that I've seen in writing has been written from a policymaker's perspective, top down, and not necessarily with the community's interests at heart. So I, I really thank you guys for taking the time to share your you know, your insights, and, and I think it'll be really helpful to other people and other. Community. Well, I we hope so. Remind, mm-hmm, yeah, I want to remind our listening audience that you're listening to Nonprofit You, and we're speaking with Catalina Gaite and Cecile Carol DeMello. They're co directors of Blocks Together. We'll be taking questions at about the 20 minute mark, so that's in about eight minutes or so. And the call in number is 347 884 8121. Okay, Cecile, can you share with us some of the case studies, if not from the toolkit, then from your own experiences and share some more lessons learned? Sure. Um, One of the studies that's highlighted in the toolkit is the story of the Staples Center in Los Angeles and the work Mm -hmm. that was done to create a a community benefit agreement that was pretty holistic um, and uh, that was one of the things that we kind of researched earlier on to get some inspiration from about how to do, how to approach um, our economic development work. But one of the things mm-hmm. that that story shares, as well as our our eight-year struggle with the um, Chicago Central Park TIF, as well as some of our education reform work, is this um, piece around oversight and implementation. Mm-hmm. Um, so... It's, it can be real comfortable for those of us who are community builders to kind of get the agreement, get the win, get the victory, and kind of, you know, move on to the next thing. But in this kind of work, it was real important for us to still implement things, still research it, create spaces for review with residents. 
um, mm-hmm. so that we were making sure that the policy or the practice was being implemented in the spirit of what we intended. Because sometimes you can win things and um, it not be implemented in the way that you did, that you wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of loopholes can be created and like smoke and mirrors. Um, so while we're not saying we've been able to ensure everything has been implemented correctly from the things that we had organized to win, um, mm-hmm. we have are just um, we've just learned to stay focused um, and okay. always go back and reflect and to go back and see through data or through stories um, or through even just community meetings with the people that we won these things from the different institutions and kind of see what's going on. And sometimes that makes you kind of go back to the drawing board, even when you expect it to be further along down the road, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I like about the work, too, is that we're just kind of peeling back layers until we get to that core of the onion, right? So we Mm -hmm. started in the toolkit, there's um, a description of, you know, how this work kind of started after an advisory council, and then from there went to the annual meetings, and from there it was just layers and layers and layers because what we okay. really, our long-term goal is still not what we attain, but we're trying to work towards that, and that includes implementation and always continuing to go back to the drawing board. Okay. Well, it sounds to me like one of the main things, one of the main lessons you've learned is to make sure that you have the infrastructure to have decision making being made, you know, at the ground level, and then you can kind of work your way through the other stuff to make sure the implementation is working. At least that's what it sounds like you're saying, and that's pretty powerful. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So, Carlo. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. So, okay. So, Carlo, the. This toolkit, it also includes recommended actions that the community groups can take as it relates to making TIFs work for the community. So we just heard a little bit of that from Cecile. Can you share share with us some more examples? And um, also I just want to add to also one of our biggest lessons, at least being out there, was um, just the need for ownership as opposed to buy-in. When, because um, mm-hmm. you know, people say, have you been able to sustain this campaign for eight years? And I always tell people it's because it's not my campaign. It's not Cecile's mm-hmm. campaign. It's not Blocks Together's campaign. It's the community's campaign, right? So, um, mm-hmm. and like she was saying, the more we learn, so the need for information um, is really important, right? So the more we learn about how it functions, like we we were able to utilize. And you actually, thank you, because you were the first person that kicked off our first town hall, community town hall, where we were just beginning to inform and engage community members like about eight years ago, I think it was. Oh, wow, um, wow, thank you. <laughs> So you, you you were our first one. I believe it was you and Commissioner Quigley that had come out the, for our first uh, town hall and, you know, make it, just being in the first phase of education. And I can't stress enough how important it is to have a, a community that's informed mm-hmm. uh, because then they can't lie to us. So I think that's one of the main things. But also we were able to, because of the community being informed and learning ways that we can have more control and oversight over the TIF, one of the first things we organized was a TIF, um, bringing back a TIF advisory council that mm-hmm. started up a few years before but was no longer um, functioning. So that was one of our first uh, tasks was to make sure that there was a back a TIF advisory council for the Chicago Central Park TIF. Right. Once uh, mm-hmm. that was established, we're like, okay, so what does the TIF advisory council really do? We have to advise, <laughs> but in order to advise, we have to really hear what the rest of the residents in the community want. And um, in order for them to know what they want, they need to know where the money is going. So therefore, we started doing service in the neighborhood um, and then um, instituting the t- uh, TIF report back, the state of the TIF. So every mm-hmm. year... Now it's about, I think, seven years we've been doing it where we have, right after the TIF report comes out at the end of June, mm-hmm. usually in the summer or in the fall, we'll have a, a state of the TIF where we go over the budgeting with the aldermen and the Department of Planning. So the community and the aldermen are able to go over the budgeting and where the money went, if they have any questions, to justify some of the allocations and ask questions regarding the benefit um, that there was to the community. Right, so that was, um, and then also just through the uh, surveying and people understanding more, we were like, and like Cecile talked about earlier, um, being able to use some of those TIF dollars for capital improvements in our communities um, where there, you know, there was actually 
some school had not received money in 10 years and were in bad need. So it was a, gay, a way of engaging the community, but mm-hmm. I think what, one of the most powerful ways to engage a community is when they feel ownership over that fight and when they feel mm-hmm. informed, mm-hmm. right? So, um, mm-hmm. and I think also one of the things we learned from your first um, lesson was always speak with the truth and with the facts. And that has been able to get us and open doors for us when people assume because we don't have letters after our names that we didn't know what we were talking about, that we were ignorant. And once we opened our mouth and saw that they couldn't fool us, that we knew the numbers, we knew the state mm-hmm. law. And that was that was so crucial, right, for our yeah. members and for us to know the way the, the state law governs the TIF. And there were some things that even uh, people in the Department of Planning were trying to tell us, and we're actually lying. So it was really important for us to know the law, how it was governed, Mm -hmm. and then to figure out that the Department of Planning has practices that are not always aligned Mm -hmm. with the law. So it was really it became one of our catchphrases. Is that according to the law or is that according to your practice? Because according to the law, we can do A, B, and C, right? So once again, Mm -hmm. I can't stress enough how important it is for folks to be able to have the tools to advocate from themselves. I think one of the biggest things as a popular educator we could do is give people the tools to learn for themselves. Because then once you know how to learn, you, there's, no, there's no stopping you where to access the information. And once we know the truth, we see how bad, you know, they are um, taking from us. They're taking from us, and they're not reinvesting in our community. So it gives us a, a context of why our communities are in the economic state they are in. Okay, that is great. So, Cecile, you guys are going to have an upcoming TIFF toolkit launch. Can you give us the who, the what, the where, the when, why all of this is happening? Sure. So, um, like I was sharing, this event is kind of, uh, the purpose for us is to be able to share stories, but also to kind Mm -hmm. of um, have a gathering space for everyone um, to ask questions, but to also think about how a collective um, kind of future uh, for those who are working on, on work like this how we can move forward and, um, and kind of some unity. But the event's going to be on Saturday, December 3rd, um, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Breakthrough Ministries, which is located at 3219 West um, Carroll Avenue. If you go to our website, www.btchicago.org, there's information to RSVP for the event, which is really important. Um, so we will uh, have some panel discussions as well as some breakout sessions um, from uh, yourself to also Willie J. R. Fleming okay. from the anti-eviction campaign. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, talk about community control development and also revitalization versus gentrification. Um, so it's it's um it's gonna be um one of those type of events where it's just gonna leave your brain a little fried. <laughs> oh, you're just gonna have in a good way, be, you know, right? In a good way. Yeah, in a good way. We're good conversation <laughs> with good people doing the work, um, and just uh, an opportunity for you know exploration and just um, recommendations and just thinking through things. So it's kind of the purpose for this space for us. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be passing out um, copies for those who are SVP of the actual TIFF toolkit. So you can kind of keep it. You know, some of us like to have that hard copy, make notes on, highlight, put stickers on. Uh, But this is Mm -hmm. definitely not a document you want to leave on a shelf. It's definitely something you can use and refer back to. Um, And we're actually thankful because groups like Neighborhood Capital Budget Group um, with um, Jackie Levy and a few other organizers throughout the city, they had stuff like this, um, you know, Mm -hmm. 10 years ago, and um, we kind of are, you know, admonishing that work that happened before and just kind of have some updates with our story. Yes, yes, yes. I I love Jackie. Between her and John Paul Jones and Ben Jarofsky, you know, those three are responsible for, I would say, about 90% of what I know about the TIFs, and I just thank God for them. Yes. And for you, because you helped us a lot in uh, kicking off our campaign. Well, well, thank you so much for for having me. I'm looking forward to to it. Uh, We'll get into a pretty deep conversation about gentrification versus revitalization, and I won't go into all the details because 
I want to remind our listening audience that they're listening to Nonprofit You, and we're speaking with Carolina Gallaudet and Cecile Carroll Zunello. They are co-directors of Blocks Together. We'll now take questions from our listening audience as well as the chat room. The call-in number is 347-884-8121. I see a caller, and I am not sure if he or she wants to participate. Um, That number is 773-668-7255. I'm getting ready to click on to your mic, and if you want to comment or ask a question, please do so. And if you don't say anything, I won't be mad at you either. There's still plenty more that we could talk about, but we want to honor, you know, our guests and take their questions and comments. Hello, caller. Did you have a question or a comment? Okay. We have lost that caller. Um, so there's plenty of us. I plenty of stuff for us to talk about. You know, when we were last here, we talked about the fact that you were working with city officials to try to make microloans available in the community. Can you give us a status of where that process is? Well, it's still in the negotiating um, stages with the Department of Planning because one of the things was that we want to be able to utilize TIF funds. And because under the the TIF state law, you are able to use TIF dollars to start micro lending programs if it's going to enhance um, community development, economic development. However, the Department of Planning here, was there somebody on the phone? Um, Um, It sounds like, uh, hello? Okay. Carla, did you have a question? Okay, I'm assuming that. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, so part of it is is that, and they had to admit once they told us at first that they couldn't um, do it with TIF dollars, when we pushed back and said according to the law you could, they had to admit that they just don't have the mechanisms uh, to put it in place. Now, so we're mm-hmm. we're actually doing, we have been doing the research and trying to figure out what is the best way to do it. And so we've had to do the work for them basically, okay. in order to be able to establish. But that's one of the, the um, one of the goals that the, the Economic Justice uh, Economic Committee have, Economic Justice Committee has, is able to be able to utilize TIF funds to do micro-lending um, it, within the Chicago Central Park TIF. Yeah, I or actually a, 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 any TIF that people live in, that's something that could be done, right? And this okay. is something that uh, we're really pushing for all TIFs. Uh, people that live in different mm-hmm. TIFs to see that you can push for utilizing participatory budget methodology to allocate funds. Mm-hmm. You can um, you can push. Don't let them limit you. Um, okay. So one of the things is really understanding how the the, the TIF law works, and then being able to uh, use your imagination and your vision and how that money should be allocated mm-hmm. to benefit you, the residents that are um, mm-hmm. investing in the TIF funds. Okay, I'm going to make this one comment, and then we're going to have to bring this to a close. But I, I would think that, you know, one of the mechanisms they could use is use Blocks Together as a contractor, you know, as a delegate agency, and have you guys do the administration, you know, pretty much like they do with NHS, you know, for um, the NIF program, and pretty much like they do with Summer Corps and some of the right. other economic development agency. I, I, I don't see that as being, you know, a huge obstacle, but, you know, it does take time to make sure that the infrastructure Pressure is in there. And, and I wish you guys the best of luck. Um, there looks like there might might be one question. Hello. Hello. Caller, did you have a quick a quick question? We've got less than a minute. I'm so sorry. Valerie, this is Leslie Page Piper. How are you? I want to call in and congratulate the ladies, uh, Cecile and Caroline. I'm so inspired by what you're doing and informed uh, and invigorated. And uh, there's a quick uh, note you can give in terms of how you were able to to develop the the support of the community. Um, If you can indicate a a few uh, quick bullet points about how you were able to achieve that, because really you've done so much good work there in the community. So if you could share a little bit about that. 
Okay, awesome. Uh, I, I think there was a lot of trial and error. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, well, I can, can speak to this too, but really quickly, um, uh, the trial and error piece, but also we tried to make this the conversation that people in the community were talking about. So we did things like tip barbecues, tip coffees, anywhere people would open their doors and have a space for people in the neighborhood. We did real intimate grassroots organizing, door knocking, and our our factor for success was are people talking about this on the corner? Are people talking about this at the store? Are they talking about it at their black clubs? And that's kind of the grassroots work we were doing um, to make sure people were aware of the campaign. Okay, well, that's awesome. Well, I want to thank everybody for listening to Nonprofit You Blog Radio Talk Show. I want to thank our guests, Carolina, Carolina Gaete and Cecile Carol DiDomello. And the show should be available within about an hour for download. I want to make sure that you tune in next week for a lively discussion. We're going to be talking with Noah Timina Jenkins on writing proposals and grants management. And just one um, closing remark from each of you but before we go. We'll start with Cato and then we'll go with Cecile. Um, thank you so much for having us, Valerie, and we look forward to having anybody that wants to come in and join the conversation. See you Saturday at 11. Okay, awesome. Okay, Cecile. Um, and I would, I would just say, yeah, I can't wait to see folks um, Saturday and um, yeah, we 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 kind of have to make our own path sometimes, and that's my word for the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, ladies, so much. I, I'm so excited. Every time I talk to you guys, I, I learn a lot. So thank you much, and take care. We will be in touch. All right, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wow, nice haul. Told ya. Macy's Backstage has perfect last-minute gifts. With prices so low, you never need a coupon. I scored the perfect makeup palette. Super cute. I grabbed these cool drones for the guy. Nice. Here's a handbag for Aunt Helen. Found awesome toys for the kids. Cookware for the budding chef. Oh, and look what I got for Uncle Hank. A puppy chew toy? No, no, that's for Rex. They even have gifts for pets. Well, you know Uncle Hank. He'd love anything <laughs> we gave him. Macy's Backstage. Savings for everyday life. Details at Macy'sBackstage.com. When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is, we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require port and of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams at up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions.